the reliable 3000 watt pure sine wave inverter. Now I need to start this video out with a little bit of a warning because I know a lot of you are not going to make it to the end of this video. I had received this inverter for review and upon some investigation, when I received my unit, I did not have any markings on my terminal block for my neutral ground and live wire or line or hot wire, whichever you want to classify this one as. So I reached out to Reliable to give me some direction on which terminal is for which wire. Uh, they then sent me back an email which indicated neutral on top, ground in the middle, and line on the bottom. And I checked the Amazon listing at the time and the Amazon listing did show this configuration. But then after testing, I realized that in fact the top wire is actually the live wire and the bottom was supposed to be the neutral. I'll show a picture of how I figured this out. Uh, easy way that I did it was I took my multimeter and I checked for continuity between the line wire here and the line wire here and there was nothing and then I moved it up to the neutral wire and I had continuity which meant that the live wire over here was the neutral wire over here. So I contacted Reliable again and they have since updated their Amazon listing to reflect that the live is at the top and the neutral is at the bottom. And they are gonna send out a communication. This is brand new to them on the market. So I'm glad that I was able to help them find this issue and they have fixed it. So with that being said, this is the Reliable 3000 watt pure sine wave inverter. We all know Reliable, they have great inverters. A lot of us out there use them. I've had this one here for many, many years and I have never had any issues with it. It's bulletproof. So I don't expect any different out of this unit here. So with this unit, I'm gonna do a complete setup with the terminal block and I'm gonna do some different testing on it. Check the pure sine wave inverter all around, check out the unit. So first off, when you get this unit, there's multiple different ways to mount this. You can either have it sitting flat like this or you can mount it on a wall like this. You can mount it up like this vertically, but I would not just because I wouldn't want anything falling into the air vents and getting into the components of the unit. So therefore, personally, I would just mount it on the side like this, keeps it out of the way, and then you don't have any dust or any particles or anything getting inside the unit, disrupting any electronics. So for me, I'm gonna mount this on the wall now. I've already gone ahead and set up a board here for an example. Okay, now we have it mounted on the wall. Now let's talk about cabling. So with the unit, you get two positive cables and two negative cables. Now these are meant to be paired together. So you're gonna have two on your positive terminal of your battery going to your inverter and two negatives together going to your inverter. These are 10 millimeter wires, about a four gauge wire, maybe a little bit thicker than a four gauge wire, not much. So with the four gauge wire, if you're just gonna use this inverter and just use with the plugs on the inverter, you can get away with using these wires. But if you're gonna be doing any higher discharge, where you're going to hook up to your terminal block, I would suggest running your own wire. I'm going to be using a two gauge wire and I will show that later on. But for now, we're going to hook it up with the cables that were included in the package and we're going to turn it on and see what happens. So for this demonstration, I'm going to be using lithium iron phosphate. Uh, there is a certain technique you have to use to hook these up in order to protect the capacitors on your inverter. And I'm going to show you guys that now. So I'm going to start with my negative wire. Make sure if you're using a wrench like this, you don't contact your two terminals on the battery. It can be very dangerous. So in the instructions, they say to have the washer up against where the lug contacts. But I'm more favorable of putting the washer behind and having your terminal lugs directly onto the metal of the inverter. To me, it just makes more sense for contact. Now for lithium iron phosphate, because this is such a low resistance value, if you just directly connect, you're gonna get a spark and a surge of power into your unit. So all I'm using is a five watt resistor. You can use a 10 watt resistor, but all I'm gonna do is just use this 
to pre-charge the capacitors inside the unit. So you just hold that for a few seconds. And then when you make your connection, there's no spark and there's no capacitors blowing up. So I'm gonna put the washer then lock washer and then the nut. Okay, now that we've got the battery set up, we're ready to fire on the inverter. This is gonna be your front control panel here. So this is gonna be your on off. And then you have a 20 amp plug outlet here. Most units only come with a 15 amp outlet. If you are gonna be using 20 amps AC, I'm gonna suggest that you use a 12 gauge wire instead of your regular 14 gauge wire for your extension cords. Okay, now that you have your inverter hooked up to one battery, this is gonna give you light duty use. So this you can run, you know, your TV, uh, some electronics, but if you do want to run the full 3000 watt, you're going to have to change up your battery configuration. I'm going to be using three 100 amp hour batteries. This should give me the opportunity to use 300 amps of power, but as well as 250 amps, which is what you're going to need for using 3000 watts. Something with the inverter size that I need to mention is that I've fallen victim to this over the years. You buy an inverter, and you think it's gonna be enough, and then you wanna add more things to your system, and then you need to upgrade your inverter again. So buying a larger unit right off the bat is kind of more beneficial than starting out small and working your way up. For example, here I have a 300 watt pure sine wave inverter. Then I have a, another 3000 watt pure sine wave inverter and then a 4,000 watt pure sine wave inverter, a 1,500 watt, and a 2,000 watt pure sine wave inverter. So instead of bumping up every time you wanna add something, for the inverter, I typically suggest go larger, and then that way in the future when you wanna add more things, you have the ability to do so. So now that you've run it, you run, let's say, a small fridge, and you run your TV and such, but now you wanna run a coffee maker, as well as your fridge and TV, so you're gonna to have to scale up on your output as well as your battery. So now we're gonna change out from, with the 150 constant current and 200 amp hour JBD BMS inside the SunFun kit, we're gonna to upgrade to three 100 amp hour batteries. So I still need to make a review video on this battery. I'm sure many of you can guess what it is, but I just wanna leave the name out for now until I'm able to do a review on it. So I have one battery, two batteries, and three batteries. So now what I need to do is I need to connect the negatives together as well as connect the positives together and then connect it into the unit. So now I've made up my own wire. This is gonna be four gauge wire. This is what I'm gonna use to get my high amp draw. So the way I'm gonna run this is I'm gonna have, this is my main positive and this is my main negative. So I'm going to connect these two batteries here and I'm going to connect this now to the inverter. Now the inverter also comes with these protective caps. So I'm going to put that one on the... So now this is my negatives. Now I'm going to connect up my positives. Before I move any further, make sure all your batteries are at the same state of charge. So bring them up to full and then do this connection. Now the same thing with your positive wire on here. I'm gonna pre-charge the capacitors with a resistor. And then there's no spark. And put my protective cover over. And there we go. Now I have a 300 amp hour battery capable of doing 300 amps of continuous discharge. Now for the way that I'm gonna be hooking up to the terminal block, I've manufactured this breaker panel out of mini circuit breakers. And what this is, is this first one here is a GFCI. So this is gonna protect the system from here on. So from here back, it's not protected by the GFCI, but from here forward it is. And what this does is monitor between the neutral wire and the live wire. If it sees any kind of uh, difference in the amperage going back and forth, then it knows that it's not traveling back through here and it'll trip the breaker. So this is a 32 amp, 
This is only capable of running at about 25 amps AC. So the 32 amp is perfect. And then these two here are both 16 amp breakers and I have two pairs of 14 gauge wire coming into these receptacles. Now these receptacles, this side here is gonna be 15 amps and this side here is gonna be capable of 15 amps. 32 amp breaker is gonna be protecting the 10 gauge wire. So this is 10 gauge multi-stranded wire. I have a ferro on the end here because it's multi-stranded and when I go to screw it into the terminal block, it's gonna twist up the wires and it's not gonna have a proper connection. So if you have a multi-stranded wire, you're gonna to wanna to use a ferro at the end, as well as if you're in an RV or a high vibration area, you're also gonna to wanna to use a multi-stranded cord. This cord here uh, is just one single strand. This is not very good for a high vibration type of install. So you're gonna to wanna to use a multi-stranded wire as well on this side if you are using this in an RV. The inverter can only produce about 25 amps AC, which is enough for 10 gauge wire. That's running down into the 32 amp breaker. And then the 15, well, 16 amp breakers here are gonna be protecting the 14 gauge wire here. Now these breakers, except for the GFCI, these breakers do not protect you. They protect the cable. So if you have to size this appropriate for the cable because you don't want the cable heating up and causing a fire, that is the only function of a breaker is to protect your wire, not you. So make sure that you're aware of that if you're gonna be playing around with this stuff. So now I'm gonna wire this up. I'm gonna start with my ground wire. And then I'm gonna go with my neutral wire. And then I'm gonna go with my live wire last. Okay, give all your wires a good tug. Okay, we can turn this on. And you can see on the display here, we have our volts for our battery and our volts for our AC climbing. Okay, so it looks like it's on. Now I'm gonna test the terminal block and this plug again like I did before. So as you can see on my line wire on the terminal block and my neutral wire on the plug, I have 124 volts, which is perfect. That means that this is the appropriate hookup for this setup. Uh, something else I should mention too, if you wanna hook this up directly to your RV or camper, uh, you can get the plug for your RV or camper, get the end, this is 10 gauge wire, and then just follow the color coding inside here, and you can plug this directly into your terminal block, and then have your RV or camper connect into this. I have one extension cord on one 16 amp breaker, and I have a second extension cord on the other 16 amp breaker. Okay, let's start off with a table saw. Ready, here we go. Miter saw test. Okay, ready to go. Had a little bit of a hiccup at the start and we passed now I'm gonna try one more thing that I don't think it's gonna pass but let's give it a shot so I'm gonna attempt this a shop vac with the miter saw now I may need like a 35 or 4,000 watt inverter for this but let's see if I can uh, trigger it to shut down Okay, well, it worked. So a shop vac and a miter saw, and it still worked. Well, that was uh, pretty impressive. I did a shop vac and a miter saw at the same time, and it didn't cut out. Now, if you're gonna be doing something like that prolonged, I would strongly suggest upsizing your uh, inverter, maybe to a 35 or a 4,000 watt inverter, if you're gonna be continually doing that. That was just a quick demonstration, just did a couple cuts, so. It's not gonna destroy the unit, but I would suggest make getting a bigger unit if that's what you're gonna use it for. But I thought it'd be interesting to try it out anyways. Okay, there you have it, worked as advertised. Uh, they have updated for the line ground neutral on Amazon, so you can follow those instructions if you purchase this unit. So if you were to use two 100 amp hour batteries in parallel, uh, you can run easily a coffee maker, a TV, and a few small other things. 
If you upgrade to three 100 amp hour batteries to run this unit, you can easily run your mini fridge, uh, coffee maker, TV, all at the same time. So if you have any questions about this, leave them in the comment section below. And if you like this video and find it interesting, uh, like, subscribe, and leave your comments down below. They help out a lot. And uh, thank you for watching. Bye.